Yo, what is going on Guardians and uh, welcome back to another Destiny 2 gameplay video. Hey, in this video, I'm going to chat about how I personally tend to shut down those pesky shotgun rushers in PvP. So, shotgunning is very popular right now because of how easy it is to be relatively successful while using them in relation to weapons that require precision like snipers or foresight and pre-charging like fusion rifles. Now, my favorite way to deal with them is to hit him with a no scope straight to the man parts and follow it up with a disrespectful open-handed slap to the face but in reality can't always make that happen no matter how much you'd like that to be the regular thing so here's a few tactics that i rely on every single game to put shotgunners down before they can shred my guardian with buckshot now before we hit those tactics let me first say that there are three leading causes of death to shotgunners in crucible and they are indecision hesitation and panic these three things will be your greatest threat and usually when you die to a shotgunner, one of these is at least partially to blame. So remember that no matter what you choose to do, make sure that you make a choice and commit to it. It's better to commit to a bad plan in the moment than to commit to no plan and die helplessly and shamefully. Now, let's get to these tactics. Number one, give them the old backpedal and shoot. This is the easiest and most common way to deal with shotgunners, keeping them at arm's length is one of the best ways to make them panic and rush their shots. They often slide into what they expect to be an easy kill, only to find that you're creating distance while actively shooting them with a the primary weapon. Jumping backwards while you do it is also beneficial depending on your primary. Obviously this is a bad choice if you're using a scout rifle or a pulse rifle, but if you're using a hand cannon or a sidearm, then these weapons are pretty solid in close quarters from the air and can reliably hit consecutive shots. The backpedal and shoot tactic is best used when you see the attack coming. If the shotgunner catches you off guard and is up in your grill, then backpedaling in a straight line often makes follow-up damage for them pretty easy. So, don't rely too heavily on this tactic unless you expected the person to push and you already made sure to have the appropriate weapon ready while you prepare to backpedal. Number two, the top-down attack. This is largely a baiting tactic. When you see red on the radar or you've seen the opponent through a doorway and you know they're gonna push, it's often a great tactic to jump up in the air and try to time it so that the opponent exposes themselves or pushes while you are airborne. This gives you the first damage dealt in the gunfight. As you continue to track their movements, as you descend, you only have to make sure that you can finish them off with your weapon or a melee as you come down again to secure the kill. But you gotta be fast and accurate because otherwise the shotgunner will look up, locate you, and eliminate you in likely one shot. Sometimes it's smart to drop a grenade as they push, making it easier to clean them up with your primary or special weapons. This tactic, the top-down attack, is one of the most consistently reliable tactics for shutting down shotgunners as they push. It's something that even the top tier players on all platforms do regularly, even in tournament play. Their goal is to kill the opponent before the opponent can even return fire. And that's what makes this tactic so useful. Number three, now this is often used to lead into number two, but this tactic is what I like to call the break and debate. The break and bait, Even with the old break and bait. This tactic is initiated by breaking line of sight when possible and then baiting the shotgunner into pushing you while they believe you're on the run. So even top tier players want to commit to killing you at this point if they've gone through the trouble of pushing this close to you with their shotgun and they want to see the kill through. They want to secure that kill. So now that you've broken line of sight, you can control the engagement again. Notice in this clip, I'm constantly using these little pillars as a means of breaking line of sight and then re-engaging repeatedly to keep these guys guessing and put them down. Every time you break line of sight, you introduce uncertainty into the equation. They don't know if you've gone high, they don't know if you've gone low, if you're just on ground level, they don't know if you've pulled out a different weapon or tossed a grenade or a smoke grenade. So breaking line of sight tees you up to do some cool stuff. And once you've broken line of sight, you can bait them into pushing you and uh, you can be ready to deal with them this time. So you can uh, jump back in the direction that you came from, go over their heads and run away, or you could jump and melee them from the top down, or you could slide no scope them in the junk, whatever you wanted to, right? The possibilities are endless, but it's generally a good tactic to break 
to break line of sight and then go with tactic number two and jump and hit them with a the top down attack the choice of course is yours number four is called kiting or what i like to call the brave brave sir robin and no one under the age of 30 is going to get my reference there most likely kiting is when you turn your back uh you know to a pushing opponent and pull them to a place that you want them to go so as long as you're close enough to them that they want to continue to pursue you then you can pull them towards your teammates you can buy yourself time while you're waiting on a grenade cooldown or a super cooldown and then you can turn and engage when you have those things ready to go or you could pull them to a location where you believe you've got the tactical advantage kiting is only the right move if you're already hurt or you need to reload your weapon and you know that if you stand your ground and try and get that reload off that you're going to be dead before you finish it right generally it's best to use one of the other tactics and try to put the, the rusher down but if you know you can't deal with the threat very well then you may want to consider kiting the opponent i like to pull them towards my teammates and let them deal with them so be selective about when you do this though because it sucks getting shot in the back with a shotgun <laughs> The last tactic that I want to suggest is specifically for precision loadout users. If you use snipers or bows, you may want to intentionally aim for center mass and get a good body shot in when someone is, is you know, rushing you actively. Sometimes this will spook the user or the player into disengaging. Usually they will just keep holding forward and you instantly swap to your hand cannon or your sidearm or your auto rifle and you follow up that body shot with additional primary damage and put them down. I tend to prioritize handling on my weapons for this very reason. I want to give myself as much time as possible to clean up those body shots and move on. Now, some people, usually idiots, they like to piss and moan about body shots. But this is sometimes the smart move. And they can moan all they want as they look at a respawn screen and you continue your kill streak. See, Professional gamers have been body shot, you know, body shotting and cleaning up their kills with precision weapons for almost 20 years now. So don't be ashamed to go for the smart kill over the flashy kill. So these are my uh, five main tactics that I wanted to share with you for shutting down shotgun rushers. And uh, I'd be more than happy to break down more instances of these things. If people are interested in that, I could do a follow up video and kind of break some of these plays down where I do. Uh, all of these in sequence i'd be happy to showcase that more if you would like but if that's something you're interested in let me know in the comments section otherwise thanks for watching the video i appreciate your support here on the channel and uh, remember we do have uh, four clans we've got pc xbox and ps4 clans uh, all up and running if you are a member of our community on twitch and uh, even if you don't want to be a part of a clan we have a very active discord with uh, you know search features for LFG groups and all kinds of things, and uh, you know, over 1,400 people are in that Discord. So, if you would like to have a community that you can game with, you know, do LFG stuff with, get raid groups with, get uh, gambit groups with, whatever it may be, comp groups. We've got people in the front lines community that seek out groups that they can help with competitive, and uh, there are people who have helped. Others in our community get things like Luna's Howl and the Redrix's uh, Broadsword. So feel free to use those features. And uh, in order to be a part of our Discord, uh, all you have to do is go to the Twitch channel, which is www.twitch.tv slash thetruevanguard. And if you're a sub there, then all you have to do is link your Twitch account to your Discord account on desktop by opening up Discord, clicking on the settings cog, and then hitting connections and linking your Twitch account there. And after a few hours, the two will sync up. And on the left-hand side of Discord of the app, you can scroll down that little scroll wheel until you see my logo and click on it. And that will be our Discord community. So if you wanna be a part of it, that is how you make that happen. So I'll be sure to put the link to my Twitch channel in the description of this video. Thank you for watching. Love y'all so much. Be warm and well-fed, my friends. I hope to catch you in the crucible.